The Small Business Show, episode 164, for Wednesday, March 28th, 2018. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business owners. Sponsors for this episode include Text Expander, where at textexpander.com slash podcast, you can get 20% off your first year, and Jamf, where at Jamf, J-A-M-F, dot com slash SBS, you can get your first three, de- actually, you get three devices at any point in time for free for life. We'll tell you what that means in a little bit here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little cold, but uh, but I'm good. Yeah, you had a heat heat issue. I, I saw. I'm, I'm uh, having a heat issue, yes. <laughs> I saw a request for a, spa- a space heater <laughs> yeah, on Facebook. That's right. <laughs> you know, wife. that, that um, I, I guess my wife posted it just generally on yeah. Facebook. I posted yeah, mine. Yeah. We have a private group or a closed group, uh, whatever the Facebook sure. calls it. There's no privacy over there, but it's a closed group. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for our neighborhood. And, and we started this before next door was a thing or anything, but that's been a really handy thing. Cause I posted oh, yeah. out there and within about, you know, 20 minutes I had like four different neighbors saying, yeah, just come on by. And the nice thing is that's it's cool. just, you know, it's, I know that it's the, you know, 200 people that live within, you know, three minutes of me or whatever. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty great. good. Yeah. 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 It is pretty good. So bad. Yeah. I like I yep. like it. That, yep. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, hey, uh, after last week, after last week's show, we were talking as we often do, uh, as after the show wraps up and we start chatting and then something comes up and, uh, we, we got on the topic of, uh, legal stuff and mediation and, uh, well, and I arbitration. Even teased, I even teased right? that a little bit in you the, did. In the right. episode. You did. Yeah. That, yeah. That yeah. I, I, I had an interesting experience where I learned something I didn't expect to learn, which is the best, you know? Yeah. So, so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about, uh, the differences in mediation and arbitration, yep. uh, how you may be involved in those. And then we've each got, of course, because we've been in business for a long time, <laughs> we've each got stories about these that we would love to share. With, yeah, well, uh, we're going to share today. But we would love yes, to we share are, them. We're, yes, that's right. And we are we're going to do it. So, so, so let, let's start. Let's talk about. Uh, you want to jump right in and talk about the differences between yeah. the two? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I, I mean, from my perspective, you know, uh, arbitration. One of the biggest things it can be binding. Most often, uh, when it's in like. Uh, contracts and things like when you click lots of uh, terms and conditions, maybe even on Facebook or uh, wherever you're using, oftentimes there's our binding arbitration clauses in there that are really meant to avoid litigation, right? Right. The, the deal. Uh, so I think I think we should rewind just a step and explain sure, sure. the the difference. So uh, yep. when you litigate something. That means you're going to go into a courtroom either with just a judge or with a jury. And you, there's different ways to get there. And, uh, you know, we won't go into that. But that's th- right. But right. that's sort well, of we the did a show on that. Not too we, long. That's ago, right. right? That, that's yeah. sort of the classic, you know, two people, two parties disagree about something. And so we're going to go and, sh- you know, present our case to this group of presumably neutral people or person if it's just a judge. And and then that the decision that person makes is, you know, more or less final because there's right. always, you know, you can potentially appeal and that sort of sure. thing. But, but you're, you know, you're turning it over to somebody else. Whereas um, mediation and arbitration, I'm taking the binding thing out of there, but but okay. I think most arbitration is binding. It, it, that's right. usually the difference. But but that's something where you go to. Uh, a a lawyer's office or a mediator's office and you sit in a conference room and potentially the, the other party is there, whether or not they're in the same room. We'll talk about that in a minute, but everybody's yeah. there and everybody speaks their piece. And then the goal is to get everyone to try and agree willingly, voluntarily, uh, without certainly with, with, without it being binding, um, 
it's up to the two parties to to come up with an agreement and maybe this yeah try, person, trying to trying to reach a common common yeah, solution that and, everybody can live with right and the person uh, that's and, paid yeah. as a mediator is is there to sort of you know ease that process along in whatever method uh, you know it's a conflict resolution thing it's it's like marriage right. counseling I guess yeah so <laughs> and and if you find yourself in a, a legal situation and you're going up to you know proceeding and going you know hey we're going to go to court and everything you you will be pushed into a uh, one of these things to try to get it resolved before you go to trial. The, the judge may mandate it. Uh, yes. That says you yep. have to at least try and fail non-binding yep. mediation before Correct. I will let you, you know, walk past the bar here and, and present take my case time and in my courtroom. Yeah. yeah. Time is the major thing that that judges and the courts are are concerned about. So they want to keep you out of there. Right. Even if you've had a lawsuit filed against you or you filed it against someone. It doesn't matter. One, uh, yeah. Part of the pr- proceedings leading up to that is going to like, OK, let's do the alternative dispute resolution, which is typically mediation. Yep. 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 You got it. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it often works. I mean, the, one of the biggest benefits is you do get that uh, objective third party person to review the situation uh, and try to try to get both parties to reach some some kind of common ground. And, it, and, and I think another big benefit of it is it's typically private and confidential where once you go to court, it's not. Correct. Uh, it depends on the mediation, it, you know, hmm. y- y- the. Um, the outcome, and it depends on the state in which the proceedings are happening, the outcome or even the, the process of settlement discussions of which mediation falls under that, that umbrella, right? It's just, right. It's, a, it's another type of settlement discussion. Um, those are generally like the, 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 the everything divulged there, offered there, you know, denied there, whatever, all of that is inadmissible in court. Um, yes. but if it is successful, then everything's admissible in ah, some in states. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah depending on right, the states right. you're in. But, but it, that, yeah. that, so that gets very interesting, right? Because or maybe not everything, but, but the, certainly the result, the outcome of it is, it is admissible and all of that stuff because it com- becomes a contract like, like any other contract. Sure. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. And, and then also a huge thing, it, it's, typically much less expensive uh, because you're saving time. Again, you're paying attorneys and uh, the, once you get to court, it can take a long time and still not get resolved in the way you'd like it to. So uh, you can certainly save time and money by, by going through the mediation process. Pot- potentially. I'm not convinced yeah. of that with, with the scenario <laughs> I just went through. I, I forget I think, you're like a junior lawyer. So you're, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> hack think. lawyer is what I am. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, well, I think especially if you can, like in my case, one of the time I've been through it a couple of times and one time we never even got to the point where the judge said, OK, you have to go to mediation now. Sure. It was just like offered up and about, you know, a quarter of the way through the process process, let's say it's like, hey, let's try mediation and just see if we can get it resolved. Then. And and in our case, it saved us a ton of money and we got it, you know, yeah. did get it resolved quickly. So yeah, yeah. it worked out pretty good. Yeah. That's good. And, and I think, too, with mediation. There's a much, and this is just in my, you know, anecdotal experience here is there's a possibility that you can work things out in such a way that you can, could, you could continue your business relationship with the parties involved. Court and that can usually, be really important. yeah, court usually means thou shalt not interact anymore. Like yeah, or everybody's so angry or right. whatever that, you know, but, but mediation, if, because often mediation brings out lots of details that maybe you or the other party weren't aware of. And so it's kind of a discovery or can be a, a discovery thing. If and both so, parties are willing to hear them, that's yes, true. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. You have to have both people there. You can't have one person there with their arms crossed, angry and not try to do anything. It's a waste of your time. Right. right. Or, or yep. simply, you know, delusional, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. We're yeah. going to talk about that a little bit. Maybe. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll see. We'll yeah. see where it goes. We'll but, yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I think that, uh, it, you know, works out pretty well. I mean, it, or it can, and in, in one of my cases, and I'll give you a little background here. Sure. Uh, we had a, I went through mediation, uh, we had a dispute with a, 
massively large giant corporation that was really angry at me and not me in particular, but us uh, as if uh, like a mosquito flying around you in the middle of the night when you're trying to swat it and kill it. Right. Uh, That's kind of the way I I still think of it to this day is we bothered them so much that they really wanted to try to kill us. Uh, But uh, in our case, when we went to mediation, the mediator didn't show up. What? And yeah, he 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 got his uh, uh, you know con- whatever calendar messed up oh, or whatever. Okay. So okay, yeah, it wasn't that they didn't show on purpose, but but so we were in these two separate separate. Well, actually, we started in this one conference room, and and we'd been down a long road before we got to this mediation. It was it, it was a, a sure. long and painful road. You, it usually so, is right. Yes, yes, uh, and. One of my uh, attorneys, because we had multiple ones in the room, uh, because these guys brought like, you know, an entire an army of them to, as their one of their intimidation tactics. Of course. Um, and of course. So we were fortunate that one of the now, attorneys can I, that. Can I ask you yeah. a question about this? Because um, yes. the, the mediation that I did, uh, we did wind up settling, which will sort of spoil the story down the road. But it, trust me, it won't spoil it. Um, <laughs> and and after we settled, then we were able that th- at that point, we all saw each other. But up until that point, for the entirety of the pr- the productive part of the mediation, if you want to call it that, uh, I, I was in one conference room with my attorney. The, the other party was in another conference room, obviously with their counsel. And then uh, the mediator bounced back and forth trying to, you know, as I quantified it, you're just going back and forth telling each other, tell, telling either party the lies that the one just you know, asked you to tell them. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. here's what I'll take. It's like, yeah, really? Yeah. OK. You know, yeah. but but so we never we never interacted. I, and I, I I got the feeling that that was a decision made by the mediator for this particular set of circumstances and people. Um and that not yeah. all, that wasn't necessarily how it always was, but usually is how it starts. So I, I'm yeah, curious, so we was had yours it, that way? Yeah, ours was actually a little different. We all piled in because we were kind of standing around the lobby of this, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, place that we were meeting and no, nothing was going on. So that we we all went oh, into right. a large, a large room. And uh, fortunately, in a, one of the attorneys on on my side uh, was a actually had does did mediation and sure. was involved in that. And so when the other person didn't show up, he said, Hey, look guys, why don't we split up and let's just see how far we can take this thing. Yeah. And he played the role of mediator and did a very objective job, uh, to the point where, uh, I think it actually benefited now that I have, I've had some distance, yeah. you know, of a decade or more on that. It, it probably benefited us a lot because I felt very comfortable. You trusted you know, him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really trusted him. And, and I felt that, you know, he was really representing our case. Uh, and, you know, we were uh, definitely at, you know, we were kind of in a, in a weak point in the sense like, you know, there's a few things I've learned if, if, if going through a thing like this is number one, don't, don't really, uh, make giant if, if you're going to make a giant corporation angry or and kind of say no you're wrong over and over and over and over you need to have some money to back that up yep uh, because it's expensive to prove that you're right it and is. even if you do prove you're right it does, a, you won't necessarily win yes yeah yeah that's correct that's correct and the, the one of the first things i learned after spending a bunch of money is you may not you, you may need a different kind of attorney for this type of thing, uh, because your, your small business attorney may not have the kind of experience that's required Mm -hmm. when you're dealing with, uh, a bunch of very expensive, high powered corporate guys that are like sharks, you know, uh, that, that, so, so you got to ask yourself if we're going to go in and fight a fight like this. And, and I was young and much, uh, I don't want to say stupid, but less experience yeah, than lacking, I am now. Lacking wisdom. Yes. Lacking wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, uh, but, but along the way I learned a lot and, um, you know, one of the things I learned is that after, you know, what kind of attorney do we really need here? And, mm-hmm. and also that, you know, you may lose the battle, but you still can win the war in, in the long run. Right. And, and part of winning the war is, being able to live to fight another day. Right. 
And, totally. And, well, yeah. And, you, and, you know. and, and, the, and the problem when you're going up against a big company is they know that they probably yeah. have the ability to outspend you. And oh, shut there's you no down. doubt. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the process, you know, is there, it's like, they're going to win by attrition, you know, and, yeah. and yeah. Can uh, they just wait you out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if this is your first time, which in my case, it was the first time I'd ever been through anything like this. And yeah. I was so shocked to learn like things like, you know, facts that you felt really helped you can easily be twisted to make you look like the bad guy. And, you know, intentions can be really skewed. And so the place to learn about mediation or going through legal processes is is not when you're fighting, you know, a fortune 100 company. Uh, It'd be, it's, it's much better to do it on a small scale and, and learn a little bit first. I, yeah, I would. I, I but, would uh, yeah, I right. Yeah. That, yep. But yeah. you don't and, usually and, get to make that choice. No, I didn't get. Yeah, that's correct. That's it, correct. You know, and, and then, yep. It, yeah, yeah, well, you, you yeah, yourself. So, you're up there. You, you're yeah. there, right? You you find yourself in a scenario, and it's like, okay, well, we're standing on the precipice here of either walk away or learn through this process and hopefully make you know, get an outcome that's livable, right? Yeah, that, that's that, livable. Th- yeah. That's it. it. Yep. Yeah. And, and the last couple of things on this, on this topic real quick, because I know we're going to jump into uh, something else, but you know, one of the things you want to be sure is make sure the attorneys that work for you know exactly what you want. Uh, I felt like one of the things that I didn't do a good job of was really conveying to them what we were trying to get out. I know I wanted to win, but after going through it, I realized that winning was very a broad statement. It's and, a broad statement. Yeah. There's there, because yeah. rarely does some, is there a, you know, rarely do you win a hundred percent, even if you go Correct. to court, right? I mean, it's possible. Uh, and, and I've actually yeah, been, yeah. been in it's those possible. scenarios yeah. where it has happened, sure. but, but it's, first of all, it's rare. And secondly, it might not like even winning a hundred percent might not get you what you really want or need coming out right. of it. So you really need and, to, and, to examine that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and ask yourself and then, and then communicate to your, your team. And that last 10% that you really want may be so expensive for you to get <laughs> that it's not worth it. That's so funny and, that that's what you say. <laughs> yeah. And I think you're, I think you have a story related to that too, but I do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, that, that's my huge giant corporate story. And, you know, lastly, try not to be intimidated. It's really hard, right. but uh, you know, they're going to play all kinds of in- games with you. Cause that's what it is to a lot of these guys that are on the corporate, uh, you know, hourly payroll making 500 bucks or, you know, thousand bucks an hour. They're going to play all kinds of games and they're going to roll in with all kinds of equipment and this and people and yep. that. And you're you're going to be sitting there going, oh, my gosh, you know, there's no I, way. I but, but, knew but, going know. into this mediation that I had to remain as unemotional and objective as possible. Yeah, and, that's And good. there was one moment they, they, I said that we didn't intermingle. We actually did. The the attorney from the other side came in at one point and was, you know, explaining their perspective on things and their perspective, as I'll tell you in a minute, was like totally yes. out off the wall. Of and, course. <laughs> and and my attorney said, you know, because we had a lot of moments where we were either talking with the mediator or in this case, talking with both the mediator and the opposing counsel, you know, the, the other attorney. Um, and then we had a lot of moments where it was just my attorney and I sitting in a conference room, like, you know, checking out RSS feeds and, you know, talking about like, <laughs> Waiting, Mac stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so he, he I didn't realize that I did this. But he pointed it out to me. He said, my favorite moment of this, he's like, I don't think we're ever I mean, anything else is going to happen today that's going to trump this. He said, she said something that was that to you was totally off the wall. And he's like, your hands went in the air. And it was obvious that if you had just gone with that, it, you would have completely like screamed at her and told her how wrong she was and how ridiculous this whole thing was. And he says, you probably would have just stormed out the door and we would have gone home. You know, like it was it was clear right. that that was the reaction. That was the gut reaction. And he said, before you even like you opened your mouth and then brought your hands together in front of your face or in front of your chest, rested them on the desk, took a breath. And explained why she was wrong. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's good. Like, yay me. Yeah, you, yeah, you settled yourself <laughs> yeah. before you exploded on but, her. <laughs> but that, yeah, that's the thing is it like there are times when the explosion is is actually beneficial. Uh, not not in a cathartic way. It's always beneficial in a cathartic way. 
Yeah. Um, but, you know, in a long term way, like showing like, OK, if you want to play, if you want to cross that line, here's what you'll be met with. Right. It, and 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 sometimes that can be the intimidation in reverse. Right. But it sure. can also show that you might fly off the handle. And if you get to court, like, wow, I can make this person look really bad in court yeah. just by bringing this yeah. up, like all of that stuff. So you have to. Every word that comes out of your mouth, even in mediation where it can't be used against you unless you agree that it can be used against you. Um, even there, like I found myself being and I'm used to it. We talk on the show all the time. You know, I've been doing this for 13 years. I'm used to being on stage and pre-processing the things that come out of my mouth. Usually I'm not always great at it. Right. But, you know, it's it's, right. it's something. Right. And using that there was just like taking a breath before I replied and, you know, explaining, OK, well, here's here's actually what, what happened and, and here's where we are. And, and, you know, all of the things that were frustrating me, I was able to articulate as opposed to just venting about. And that and that I mean, I don't know if it helped or not. Uh, sure. You know, but but it's it's you want to be intentional about everything that you do there. And if only to prepare yourself for the courtroom, if mediation fails. No, it's great. Yeah. I want to talk about our two sponsors before I get into the, the nuts and bolts of my story and the thing that I learned from this media. Excellent. Okay. Um, our first sponsor is Text Expander. Uh, of course, from the company Smile. At, uh, well, they're at smilesoftware.com, but you can go to a straight link for Text Expander. If you visit textexpander.com slash podcast, yes, that's the right link. You get 20% off your subscription of Text Expander for the first year. Text Expander lets you communicate smarter, more efficiently, and more accurately. What Text Expander does is, in, in essence, or it, it, it put most simply, lets you create snippets for things that you would type or things that you might copy paste all the time, right? So before I used Text Expander, what I did was I had. I think I had a sticky note. I mean, it was, it's been that long, right. Yeah. You know, like a, like a computer sticky note where I would have all these things that I needed to type occasionally. And I would go to the sticky note and find, okay, yeah, there's the thing I need to type. And I copy it to the clipboard and then paste it uh, into the document. It was like, okay, cool. Great. Next, you know, and what text expander lets you do is invoke those with just a keystroke. So you don't have to go to the document and copy and paste. It does all the copy pasting for you from its library that you've created. And you can create things very easily. Like if you type something and you're like, that is the magic phrase. The next time a customer emails me with a similar question, I want to say this exact thing. You just highlight it, copy it, go to your menu bar and say, uh, uh, you know, create a snippet from this selection and then boom, it creates it. You can assign a little keyboard shortcut to it and then you're, you're off to the races. That's it. Next time you need it, just invoke the keyboard shortcut. If you're, if you can't remember the keyboard shortcut, you just go to your text expander library and tap it. Works out great and works really, really well. I, yeah, it, it's, it's something awesome. I know you use it. I use it. Uh, I, I, it, it is an app that I couldn't possibly live without these days. Um, it's just, you know, for business, for personal stuff, for everything. So you got to check it out. Go to textexpander.com slash podcast and, uh, and you can download it there and start messing with it. And then uh, that'll get you 20% off your first year when you, uh, when you inevitably sign up. Yeah, Our, do it. And then, uh, then thank us later. Thank us will. later. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our second sponsor is Jamf at jamf.com slash SBS. That's where you can sign up for Jamf Now, which is their device management solution for all your Apple devices at work. So you've got a an iPhone that's yours and, you know, maybe an iMac or and an iPad or something. And that that's fine. And it's easy enough for you to manage your own devices. Maybe. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as soon as you start having other people for whom you are the responsible person, even if you're not a tech support type of person, oftentimes as the business owner, that job falls to you. And Jamf now makes it super easy to do things like configuring the Wi-Fi settings, setting up email settings, deploying applications, protecting sensitive company data, even remote locking or wiping a device. And yeah, that's the thing. 
With Jamf Now, all of this stuff that I mentioned can be done remotely. So let's say you run a virtual company like I do, but you know, you might have a couple of salespeople spread across the country. If they need help setting up their email, you can put in what you know to be the company credentials and everything into Jamf Now, and it pushes them across the ether to their devices, wherever they are, and boom, magically, these settings are there. And then they work and you know there's no, hey, copy this in or, you know, listen, like type in what I'm telling you. Like that stuff gets very, very tedious and is inefficient, especially when you need to do this for multiple devices because you can do it all at once for many devices and, and group things. Really, really cool stuff. And as I said at the beginning of the show, you get three devices for free just by signing up at jamf.com slash SBS. And that's not just three devices. And if you happen to take one of them out, well, sorry, you don't know. You get three free slots for devices and you can use any devices you want in those slots. And then when you go over three, you're just paying two bucks a month per device over three. So it's a great deal. And you can get started. If Even if you're a solopreneur, I recommend getting started with this now, especially if you're the person that your family members come to for help. Put your family members phones on a Jamf Now account, right? And and just learn how it can work for you so that when you get to that point with your business, you realize, whoa, I don't need to hire somebody to do this. I can do it with Jamf Now. I already know what to do. Jamf.com, J-A-M-F.com slash S-B-S is where you go to do that. Yeah? Yeah. You know, what I love about both these, these uh, apps is, you know, they make you, especially as a small business owner, they help you automate and, uh, you know, spread, push whatever you need across these devices or whether it's the text from text expander or settings and email and all this kind of stuff from, you know, different uh, devices that you're managing, make your, your business look awesome. It's great. It make, yeah. It makes you look, I don't want to say bigger than you are, but more. No, no. More uh, organized, professional. More can professional. We say, uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Yeah, for organized, sure. professional, and and standardizes things across uh, you know multiple devices. Yep. That uh, really helps you to focus on what's you know more critically important uh, you know to you during the day. It's awesome. Cool, cool stuff. Thanks to both Champ and uh, and Smile with Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. All right. Cool. So I, I did. I was in mediation last week. Uh, yeah. Or maybe the week, I don't know, whatever it was. Very, very recently. And this was a dispute that I never thought would be resolved because we had resolved it several times and only to have the other party change their mind. But it's really the best way to say it. Uh, didn't like the the way the outcome wanted things to be different. And this was sort of why we got into a dispute in the first place without without going into all the the nitty gritty that's sort of irrelevant and boring to all of you. But that was that was sort of the issue. So this wasn't really a surprise. It was just an extension of the frustration. And the judge mandate we we had a court date. Um, you know, coming right up, but the judge said, as we said before, you gotta go to mediation. So I was like, okay, well. Uh, this all happened in Texas. I decided fine. They asked me if there was one day they could do mediation and it happened to be in the middle of South by Southwest. And I said, you know what? Fine. I'll go to South by Southwest. I'll make some lemonade here. I'll cut out a day. We'll go and do the mediation. It'll be a waste of time, but you know, at least I'll be in Austin and I'll have had, you know, seen some people and gone to you know, right. some shows and, and sense. made, yeah, made, like I said, made lemonade. No problem. So we get to this mediation and this mediator is, you know, a seasoned pro, uh, very, very, uh, this is all he does, right? A lot of times, like you said, you'll have a, a person who's an attorney who represents, actively represents clients and then also, you know, does mediation for other clients. Um, right. Yeah. And, and, and this guy is, was not that he, he was in the past, he was a trial attorney and then had, had just switched his practice to being entirely mediation, which is fine. No problem. And, uh, you mentioned before two things, you, you mentioned the objective third party. And, um, I, I think the objective third party comes in as the uninformed third party. When you had your attorney switch, you know, kind of on the fly to the role of mediator, that person already had a functional knowledge of at least 
your description of the case. Right? Sure. Yeah. Un- exactly. Understood what was going on. So there wasn't a ramp up period. And that's not normally going to happen because you've got an, the way a third party is objective is they don't know any of the things. Now, this guy came in and he made it clear. I'm not here to make the decisions. I'm not calling balls or strikes. I'm just trying to listen and see if I can find some common ground and help you to get there. It's like, okay, cool. Like, I get it. No problem. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. And I didn't go in. I I honestly went in pretty neutral. I was sort of, I know this is going to sound crazy. I was sort of excited about having the opportunity to go to a jury trial, right? Because when Mm. am I ever going to have that option again? Like, you know, even if, 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 when somebody sues you, it's like you you start the clock in years for when that might actually get to trial. So here I was, you know, weeks away from jury trial. And I thought, this is interesting. Like, this could be a little bucket list thing. I, I don't think the judge would like to hear that. So, um, but the, no, well, and I, and I think it's important you, you, and, and I don't know every detail about mm. the, the case and everything, but I don't think there was a lot at stake. There, was there wasn't not. a big risk for you to go to trial. So you could look at it a little bit differently and be like, oh, this will be great. It'll be an interesting experience. It'll be an da, experience. Da, da, da. Yeah. 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 I don't expect that this company that, I mean, we made a great product, but I, the, the, the way it's been managed uh, over the past couple of years just doesn't give any indication to me that it's going to go anywhere. So this really right. was just an exercise and potentially protecting some, you know, future worth, but, but really, I don't, I, I mean, Fine. You know, I, I, I'm right. not banking on that. OK, um, so we get in there and the mediation was a four hour mediation. We did a half day mediation, started at one thirty and the mediator went back and forth between the you know us and the other party. And, and that was fine. And there would be long periods of time where he would be with us, long periods, maybe, you know, 20 minutes or something. And then there would be 20 minute periods where he would be with them and digging in and all that stuff, which is fine. No problem. And it started out fine. He um, he started asking sort of the big picture questions. In fact, he was even the one that said, look, we're going to focus going forward. I know that this has been going on a long time. And it was obvious he was giving a spiel that he'd given many, many times. But he's right. You know, by the time you get to mediation, you've been through the muck with this thing. Yeah. You know. Right. And and he's like, look, our goal is to find out if there's a, a workable path going forward. We don't need to rehash the past. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And I'm kind of laughing right. in the back of my head because the whole reason that this case existed was because the other party wanted to rehash the past. So I was like, all right, yeah, g- good. Like, cool. Like this is that that actually gave me some faith, right? Like, okay, maybe sure. if that he makes can, sense. Yeah. If he can get That's them great. on board with that, like we're in good shape. And so we were maybe three, two and a half hours into this, you know, four hour mediation. And he comes in after a long stretch away and asks a question about something that happened like three years ago. And I, I mean, like not sticking to his yeah. moving forward thing. Yeah. And, and I and I even had to get clarity. Like he sat down and just asked the question. He didn't say, OK, I think I've got like a thing. He just sat down and in this very like almost bewildered voice asks this question. It was a, it was a very ch- different uh, person that was sitting in front of me. Right. And, uh, and I had to like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like right now you're asking like related to today or are you going back three years? And he's like, well, back in the fall and summer of 2015, and both my attorney and I are wow. like, whoa, dude, like, we yeah. don't have time to do that. Like, like, just what? He says, well, this is really an important aspect of the case. And, uh, you know, so we let him kind of talk. And then my attorney even said something like, well, these are some really nice trees that we're looking at here in this forest here. But uh, this isn't going to get us anywhere. Like, because my attorney does some mediations. He's one of those guys that does both. And so... Uh, you know, and the guy's like, well, you know, we really got to get into this. And this was was sort of the problem with negotiating with this with this other other person was any time we tried, it would get into these, you know, it, like I always called it cherry picking. It would be like, OK, you're picking the one right. thing out of the, the 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 big picture and and avoiding looking at the big picture and just obsessing about this one thing that. That sure, if that's all this was about, then right, your perspective would be correct. But 
It's right, not which is what the mediator is supposed, it's supposed to, to see to do. through that yeah. and, and keep on the on the big picture, right? And, but yeah. but you know, um, th- this other person has is, is a pro at this. I've seen it happen over and over again, which is why we were in a, a dispute to begin with. And so I was like, oh man, okay, well, all right, you know, fine. It, it was like, okay, well, we're not going to get there because I I we've had this particular conversation before about this one little you know niggling thing, and it's just not going to happen. So. You know, we let him talk and and I think at that point he might have even brought, you know, her attorney and that may or may not have been the, you know, the session where I'd raise my hands and, you know, calm myself and all that stuff. And then we were, the mediation was supposed to end at 5.30 p.m. He left at like, you know, 5 of 5 or something and my attorney and I were like, okay, well, that was fun. You know, like cool, yeah. fun day, man. No problem. We packed up our stuff. Like my attorney had literally packed up, you know, the things that he brought or whatever. And, and we were zipped up and he, and my attorney said to me, look, here's how this is going to go. He's going to go talk to them. Um, and he's going to let them leave first. And then he's going to come and delay us for like 10 minutes so that we don't have that awkward elevator conversation. And then he'll let us go. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like I could care less about the awkward elevator conversation, but you, you know, fine. Um, yeah. yeah. And so sure enough, five minutes later, the guy comes back in and, you know, again, we were in the mindset of this thing had failed. And so as he walked in, I was just being a smart ass. And this is where if I, if I could, I wish I could say I planned this, but I did not. Uh, I just said, well, Mel, his name was Mel Wallowitz, right? You know, that was the, the mediator's name. And I said, well, Mel, you met your match on this one. She certainly dragged <laughs> you into the weeds, right? Yeah. And what I what happened was his face like changed it, because two things happened. Number one, he realized I was right. He hadn't really thought like he had been drugged so far into the weeds that he he didn't he didn't yet have that perspective. So I I shocked him with that perspective. And then also his ego was a little bruised because that's right. He knows it's his job not to get drug into the weeds. Right. He got like, totally taken off track. Right. Totally taken off track. Yeah. And yeah. and he looks at us and he says, I'll be right back. And he so I we think I mean, we don't you know, we can only guess. Um, but we think he had let them go and they were packing up. So he went and, you know, five, ten minutes later, he came in and he said, OK, what if we do this? You know, and it was like, ah, now you're being a mediator again, you know. And so we were there. We had paid for four hours of mediation and that's all we paid for, even though the contracts say if 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 you choose to go longer, you know, you pay this rate per hour, yada, yada, yada. Uh, He never billed us for more, but we were there. We didn't leave there until almost seven o'clock, maybe a little after seven. So we went 90 minutes late, but he got it done. I mean, it. It, you know, you, you talked about that final 10 percent might cost you. That's exactly what I gave up was 10 percent. <laughs> uh, hard. Yeah. And yeah. I really wasn't going to give it up. And um, because I I had, you know, I had already sort of I mean, I went in there assuming mediation wasn't going to work. And then, you know, there I was and it didn't work. And uh, and so I was like, fine, we'll go to court. No problem. Like I'm already budgeting that time wise and expense wise in my head. It's it's no big deal, you know, and. Uh, my attorney, I had given him a couple of trump cards over the past couple of years to play, and he basically played one of them and said, look, man, we need this to end. And yeah. it was like smart. OK, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to get into the details of, of what those cards were, but but it, it was yeah. it, it, he had he had a little bit of power over this. And um, and and it's you know, it was 10 percent. Like you said, you yeah. just give it up and fine. And, and I think that if you bring up a good point is. uh Maybe for lack of a better word or whatever, or maybe this is the word, you know, our egos get involved and in our, our pride or whatever. And we want certain things, yeah. but not even us as the person involved in the mediation. But it, I, I've had the experience where the attorney's egos get involved. Totally. And when when that happens and they're, you know, in the, you know, this uh situation where they're trying to look good or or outwit the other guy or do some kind of thing you know who pays the price for that yeah the clients right the client pays the price and when i was back young and inexperienced and saw this going on i didn't really i just thought oh this is great these guys are you know i mean my legal experience at that time was limited to what i had seen on tv yeah and i I was like oh these guys are killing it you know and they're battling these attorneys (laughs) back and forth and not giving them an inch and telling them this and this we're not going to do this but in in the long run 
it did not do anything to solve this problem. Right. And it actually made it much worse because they were, these attorneys were angry at each other and it, it occurred at my expense yep. because I was the one paying the bill. And, and in the end, uh, I, I wound up telling the attorneys, look, I'm not going to pay. I mean, the, the legal bill was, you, you know, six, well into the six figures. And I said, hey, we're not going to pay you this oh, money. Yeah. And it actually wound up. Oh, yeah. The, the, the law firm that represented us actually split up over this case because my attorney who had handed us off to a different department. Uh, sure. You know, my, my who's this guy is still my, my business attorney. He's a great guy. Yep. He handed us off. He was so upset that the way they had handled this and got their egos involved in it at our expense that he and two other partners said, look, you know, we don't want to be in business with these guys anymore. And they split up. And I didn't know this until a few years later when I went to lunch and he said, Hey, you know, I want to let you know that your case <laughs> yeah. was the reason. And he was, wow. he was like, you know, it actually worked out really well. It worked out good for everyone, me included, uh, because things, once that happened and other people got involved in the case when they saw it kind of going sideways. Um, and then at the end, the other original group came back and said, Hey, are you going to pay this bill? And I said, no. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to pay the bill because you guys ran up the tab because you had to you know play this big game with these people, and yep. I'm just not going to do it. Yep. And and they you know we they wrote it off as far as I'm concerned. It's been you know 15 years. Yeah, or they're so, not maybe suing 20, you for it. So, so no, and if no, anybody no, was so. going to sue you for a bill, it would be a yeah. law office. So yeah, yeah, that's right. So I'm sure they took the write off and yep. you know that kind of thing. But but it's important to try to keep your ego out of it. Or you have you know, to you, just, you you yeah. have to. And I, I I mean in that sense, like in the moment when my attorney sort of played that card it was like you know what i i looked at him and i said damn it you know I, like, I, <laughs> yeah i i, I he's had, right he was right that, of course he right. yeah. yeah he was right That's right you know it's like okay yeah. fine yeah. fine yeah. And, i said you don't let me you know you're, you're taking this joy of going to court away from me but you know it's like right. i'll find another way well I'll, it comes back there. that yeah, 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 that yeah. that oftentimes winning is secondary to just easing the pain and moving on and to move something on. else that's going to be more positive in your it, business life your personal life all this kind of stuff because this the biggest problem beyond financial stuff is it's a massive time suck and it takes your it's eye a off brain the ball suck is what it is. Yeah, it's not you, even the just, time. It's just, it's yeah, mind yeah. share. And you know, the it interesting is. thing is about a year ago, like a year ago now, I was able to emotionally let go of this case. The, the whole thing, like I, 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 and it, it was not easy. And I spent, you know, a good 18 months, routinely, uh, you know, fretting over this and thinking about right. it a lot and, and just, you know, it occupying more mind share than I really could afford to dedicate to it. And so, yep. like, like I said, I a year there. ago, it, it, it went away and that part of it went away and it was just, I became very objective about it. It was like, okay, that's fine. They're, they're being silly again, you know, okay, no problem. And then I just wouldn't think about it for weeks or even months at a time. And then, you know, I'd, I'd ping my attorney like, hey, uh, we got one of those dates coming up. Like, uh, what you know, what's the deal? He's like, oh, yeah, I've been trying to get in touch with them and they don't answer. You know, whatever, whatever the silliness was. And I was like, OK, that's fine. And then, you know, we'd move on and, and whatever. Um, now that it has been settled, though, I realized there was yet another step to take because it, while I certainly had reduced the mind share that this thing was occupying for me. It, it was not eliminated and clearly it's not completely gone. I mean, here we are, you know, actually making lemonade about it. Right. Talking about. Right. The case that's right. From but, share experience. Yeah, yeah. But but it but like other than this, I, I don't think about this thing on a daily basis ever. You know, it's just it's like, OK, well, it's over. You know, whether I like the what I signed or not is irrelevant. I actually do. I think it's fine. Um, right. But it's irrelevant. Right. I can't say I, I did have a day. In Texas, you know, like the, the that night, I actually went went to, went out to see a bunch of bands, which was really sort of a good way for me to process all of this. Because in the moment, you, you know, you, you, the, the, everything's running high, emotions, and and you're exhausted, and you're hungry, and like all that stuff. And it was like, oh dang it, did I, you know, did I did I jump the gun? Did I sign that agreement before I should have signed it? Like I know they would have signed it the way it was written tomorrow. Like should I have slept on it? Should I? Should I? Should I? And so I had to go through that, right? Because that's just how my brain works. 
But that happened very, very quickly. And within 24 hours after it was over, I was like, yep. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, I it, like this outcome's fine for me and, and I'm good. Yeah. And, and that was it, you know, it was like, okay. Yeah. And I Industry. realized this and weight sort of fell off my shoulders even more. Th- this weight deal. that I didn't realize was, was still there fell off my shoulders. And that was a good thing. Yeah. It is. And, and, you know, this has been a long uh, show and I think it goes to the point of it is, this is a really important thing that can impact your business in a very negative way in your personal life in a very negative way. And, and focusing on the resolution, I think is critically important and maybe, you know, the most important uh, bit of advice that I would leave you with uh, is that, you know, it's not so much about, I mean, and sometimes you do just have to fight, you know, right to the you bitter do. end if you're, you, you got it. But you, you also I mean, there, need there to was get one some, case, I'm, I'm not going to go into it now because like yeah. you said, the show's been long, but there was one where it, it was about whether or not we could use the ad server that we well, I were that, using. Yeah. yeah. We've and talked about it here. Yeah. Right. And it was like, if we don't get this, we have to shut down our business because we can't afford to pay for what That's that right. would cost. So it was like, all right, well. You know, we got to scrap our way through this thing and yep. hopefully it works out, you know, but otherwise we'll just figure something else, uh, you know, and uh, we'll go into a different business. So in yeah, that, in right. that it, case, it was like you have to fight. You yes. have to fight. Right. But yep. but yep. we were aware of that. And and that, frankly, was less emotional uh, than this one was at times, because this one, they're really I mean, it, I, I had built something. It was my baby this this cool engine that we had built and and then there were these people you know that were trying to take it away from me right and so that th- there was some emotion of that with, with different right one. that's yeah. right and, and every time it's and every time it's different and yep. and there's a, it's also uh the, it, each of these things has like a, a lifespan yes you know and you're not gonna you may not be able to settle it really quick and months away or even months it may take years like this thing with you just had uh, yep. or has taken and but it, th- there's a when the time is is right it'll it'll come together uh, yeah. but I, I you know you just want to focus on that solution of course representing yourself as, as good as you can but getting some good outside advice keeping everybody's egos out of it and just Focus on the, um, well, you know, and, getting and, this thing resolved. And to me, like the big win for this was realizing this new negotiation tactic. Because without realizing yeah, it, great. I was negotiating in that moment with the mediator. Right? I, I was. Yeah. I was getting him back on track. And you know, I I said earlier, I wish that I could have calculated that move. Right? Of waiting until exactly the right moment to tell this guy you effed up. You know, yeah, I mean, which is right. essentially yeah, you, what I told him. Um, but it really was just be me and, me being a snarky jackass. I mean, it, well, that's it, a great really though because it, it it pointed out something to him. That he's like, "Wow, I really did <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I screwed up here. I got to go back up. and try to fight again." Yeah, yeah and, but no, that's great. If I had, I knew that an hour and a half before. If I had said that to him an hour and a half before, it would not have landed as successfully as it did. Yeah. He, in this he needed to get there. He yeah. needed he, to he, get there. And then I just yes. needed to like tip the scale. Like I needed to put the, right. the straw on the camel's back. I couldn't put the whole bale of hay on the camel's back because he would have yep. rejected it. You know, he needed. That's to, right. And so, so for me, especially cause I'm a super impatient person. Like I, I now have this particular arrow in my quiver. Like I know, and you do too, after listening yeah. to the episode. Right. But you like there is a patience it, that needs to be exhausted before you can intentionally pull this out because you're going to know that it's a, a weapon for you in a negotiation way before the time comes that you can pull it out. And you need to keep your emotions in check. And I'm saying this to you as our listeners, but really, I'm sitting right there next to you because I'm the target of this you. Right. You yeah. need to keep your emotions in check. You know, you're going to know that you're going to play this card, but you have to wait and wait. And then when you think it's the right time, wait a little bit more and then you'll know when it's the right time. Yeah, it's yeah, great. <laughs> and, you know, we and we'd love to hear your stories and, uh, you know, feedback at business show dot co uh, as well. You know, we've got uh, three, four hundred people over in the small business support group at uh, business show dot co slash Facebook. Come on over and, you know, share your story in the comments or uh, post to the uh, to the group and let us know what worked for you. 
Yeah, please do. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I you know, I know there's something wrong with me, but the, the, like this, whole, it's, <laughs> this is fun stuff. I don't know. It's yeah, crazy. it's it's yeah. a puzzle, right? You know, it's, it's a, a puzzle. That's together. exactly what yeah. it is. Yep. And That's and there's right. rule. The, th- the nice part about it is there are rules, right? That are dis- yes. d- defined by your state or your county, whatever it is. And so you yeah. know, it's it's like tax law, right? It's like not my rules. Yep. I'm just going to find a path through them that is the most beneficial path for me without breaking the rules. So there you go. Got it. Thank Thanks, you everybody. so much for listening, folks. Indeed. Yep. We um, we will be here next week. And uh, you can find us, like you said, businessshow.co slash Facebook. What's that thing we say? Keep living that charm life. See you next week.